Hello, hello, good, happy Christmas Eve. Happy, happy Christmas Eve. I am so excited to be here this Christmas Eve 2015. What a blessing that we have made it to see another year, to come into another time of celebrating the birth of Christ. And it's just an exciting time. And I'm excited to be here. My name is Chelsea Cookie Payne. I'm the founder of Payne and Glory Incorporated. And I'm also an empowerment coach, um, Epitome Coaching. And I wanted to come before you today um, on this beautiful, rainy Christmas Eve um, just to give you some encouragement. Just a few things to give you an encouragement. As it said, some Christmas encouragement um, to strengthen or boot, give our emotional and mental health a boost. And, and let me tell you what I mean by that really quickly. Um, because it's Christmas Eve and we want to spend time with our families. And so I want to, I want to just kind of quickly give, give us kind of a, a Christmas, a Christmas time boost. Uh, a lot of times people say, and, and it's documented actually, um, that over the holiday season, um, from Thanksgiving through the new year, a lot of people suffer from depression and they go through, you know, the, um, a, a heightened level of depression. And that is not uncommon. Um, and it's not always, you know, and most oftentimes it's not dealing with people who, you know, I just don't have enough money to get gifts for my kids. That's, that's kind of lower on the, on the, on the list of why, you know, that may make you feel sad or make you feel um, in a depressed state. But oftentimes you find that people during this time um, maybe have had a loved one that, you know, this time last year was with them and is no longer with them. Or, you know, they've had a life event, um, a health event that causes them to have their emotional and their mental health challenged a bit because this time of year stirs up a lot of emotion for them. And so what I want to do is just kind of encourage you. I want to encourage you that this is not, this is a season, true enough. It's Christmas time. It's, you know, the holiday time. It's, but it's also a season. It's a season for you, even if you've never battled depression, even if you've never battled um, issues where you feel felt like you were ready to throw in the towel. Maybe that's not your issue, but a lot of time there, are, everyone can say that they've experienced something that was an emotional pull for them. And so, what I want to do is just encourage you really quickly to let you know that it's just a season. You can look back on times in your life where things may have been a challenge for you in the past and you've seen your way through. God has seen you through. I literally just about an hour ago, I was putting some things on my bookshelf, as you'll see behind me. I was putting some books on my bookshelf and I came across uh, a journal of mine. Uh, I'm a big proponent of journaling. I love journaling. I think it's important to to write down. It's very therapeutic. I think it's very important to write down and, and journal and, and put your thoughts on paper. Um, when you can't talk to another person about what you're going through, it's oftentimes so helpful to write it down. So write it down. So I came across a journal um, and I have actually several of my journals over there um, through the years, but this one was dated 2002, 13 years ago, and I'm reading it, and it's the first entry was dated uh, January 1st, 2002, um, and I began to read some of the entries, and I got all the way up to um, the end. It was January 30th, actually. I got up to reading January 30th, and I had to put it down. I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, I was going through some some challenges and thank god i i went through i can look back now and say oh my gosh i i didn't remember until i read some of the things I, some of them i didn't re even remember but at the time i know they were a challenge and when i started reading them and thinking back about what i went through it was difficult it was difficult that's why i could only i only made it through uh january 30th because it was difficult even for me to read. I may, this may be one of those, uh, journal turned into ebook or turned into a book kind of thing because it was, it was a challenge. But I say that because I went through it. I went through it. 
And you too, you have gone through things and you've come through it. My testimony back then is not what it is now. I've come through it. No, I, I, I don't know what it's like for people who battle depression, who b- battle the spirit of depression. I know what it's like to be sad. I know what it's like to be despondent. I know what it's like to be hurt, upset, frustrated. I know what it's like to, to have, you know, a myriad of emotions going on. But people who, who actually suffer from depression, I don't, I don't, I've never experienced that, but I do, I do know people who do, and I do know that it is a challenge. It is really a challenge. And so what I want to encourage you to know is that just like I told you about the journal that I, that came across when I was putting my books up and I looked at, you know, what, what I've come through and the, the operative words are come through. I came through them. You too can come through. I don't care what it is during the season. Maybe, as I said a moment ago, maybe it is that, you know, there was a loved one that was with you this time last year, this time 10 years ago, and that affects you still. Know that you going forward is just a testimony of how good God is, and you can do it. Be encouraged and know that. As I said a moment ago, I'm a big proponent of journaling. When Journal, write it down, those emotions that you can't quite articulate to someone else because they may not understand the challenge that you're going through or you, you can't really put it into words yourself, but you can get it, you know, you can get a, a pen and paper and start writing it down. Write it down. It may not make sense to another soul, but it makes sense to you. As I was reading through, as I was saying a moment ago, when I was reading through the journal I could that I had from 2002, I could tell that, it, you know, not just reading the words, obviously I could tell that there, there was a lot going on. But if someone else were to pick it up, they would have had a challenge in reading my handwriting because, you know, there were times when it was, you know, my, my handwriting was just all over the place because of the emotion and intensity of what I was going through. And then there were other times where you can tell it was a great day because the handwriting was all loopy and pretty. And, you know, and, but that's your, that's yours. That's yours. These journals behind me that I have, that I've, that I've come across, which was amazing that I even had some of them, like I said, from 2002. Wow. But, you know, you find that you can look back and see where God has brought you from. Look back and see I'm not dealing with that anymore. I dealt with that. I came through that. And if by chance you come across something and you say, you know what? I'm still dealing with this. I still have this issue. Reevaluate. Look at your other entries. What got you out of those other things? I, in my journal, the one I found that I was speaking about from 2002, I found that there were, I had a lot of scriptures in there that were, I was like, wow, I, Wow, I had a lot of scriptures in there that were appropriate for the very thing that I was going through. And that seemed at that time in 2002 to have brought me out of what I was going through. If it worked then, if me pulling out scriptures and words of encouragements and and books that, you know, that were a help to me, if it worked then, why couldn't it work again? If whatever worked for you before that was not detrimental, that was not to a a, uh, working against you, if whatever worked for you before worked then, surely it can work again. If you're getting up 15 minutes early in the morning, earlier than normal, to pray, to meditate, to read, if that is what got you through the last time, guess what? It'll get you through this time. If you taking a walk around your neighborhood to clear your head just to have a few moments to yourself, some me time, very important. Me time is important. I am P-O-R-T-A-N-T. Me time is important. Underscore, big red letters, flashing lights, important. Me time. Spending time by yourself. Yes, spending time by yourself. For me, I have a long drive. I drive from my home. I drive about uh, uh, one way is about uh, 26, 30 miles. Every day. That's fun. Yeah. 
But I've, I've learned to use the, the, the most of my time because I'm by myself. And during that time, I'm listening to, to encouraging uh, messages. Sometimes I turn everything off. I turn the radio off and I just listen. I get ideas. I get motivation. I get strength. And that, and even if I don't think about it, even if I'm looking at the other cars on the street saying, ooh, I like that Jaguar or whatever, that's my me time. That's the time to decompress, think you know, spend some time with yourself, with God, and just don't think about what you're going to cook when you get home, what bills are going to be in the in the mailbox when you get home, how you're going to do this and that and the other. Because once you become so consumed with what you have to do, you you lose sight on what is happening right then. You lose sight of it. I was telling someone uh, just the other day, that um, uh, my organization, Pain and Glory, we, we won't be doing as many events as we've done in the past. This 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 year, 2015, marked our 10th year in service, and we have done uh, many many events over the past 10, 10 years. And some of them are are staple events that we have every year. But this year, I, I had to step back. I had to step back and say, you know what? They're effective but I can help someone else do them or I just, I won't be doing it because I had to look at something. I love my organization. I love the people we help. I love the people we support. I love the, the email messages and the phone calls and some the text messages. Oh my gosh. And the responses I get from people after the event has taken place each and every time. I love that. I, I, I know what my purpose is. However, that that means nothing when I look up and my 12-year-old son is almost as tall as I am when there, there are things that I may be missing out on because he's only going to be a child for a short period of time. He'll be an adult forever. And so I can't be a champion for this cause and miss out on the biggest cause, which is my family. So you got to, you got to, you got, thank you. You got to take time. You got to, you know, I looked at the fact that, you know, my son is, you know, he, there's things he wants to do. He's interested in, and I want to be interested in what he's interested in, because if I'm not interested in what he's interested in, guess what? Someone else will find his attention. If his father isn't interested in what he's interested in, someone else will get his attention and take his focus off what's important. So now at 12 years old, I've got to make I've got to make concessions. It's not about, you know, oh, I've got to do this for pain and glory. It, pain and glory will be pain and glory. It, it will continue to grow. It will continue to do. And so will my son and so will my family. So I've got to make that that choice. And so with you, that's why I wanted to do this periscope right quick to encourage you to let you know it's OK to not be okay. You can't you don't have to be superman, superwoman. You it's okay if, if every T isn't crossed and every I isn't dotted. It's okay. You don't have to to be everything to everybody, but you do have to be somebody for yourself. You are no good to anybody else until you take care of yourself. That is emotionally, that is spiritually, that is mentally. You have got to take care of yourself. I notice I didn't say financially because if you can take care, if you make sure that you are intact mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, the financially will fall into place because you've got your mind right, you've got your spirit right, and you've got your health together. What good is it to have money and you can't enjoy it because you're laying in someone's hospital bed? Or you're sitting in, 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 in rocking back and forth with your arms crossed because you're, you're overwhelmed. Money in the bank can't help that, but peace can. Peace can help that. Having peace is awesome. Having peace is awesome. Having peace is awesome. So I encourage you on this beautiful but rainy Christmas Eve. Take some time for you. Make sure that your mental, spiritual, and physical health are intact. And I don't have to tell you how to do that, really. I don't have to tell you how to make that happen. 
There's too much information out there to allow us to know how to get our physical self together, how to eat better, how to exercise. We're inundated with that daily. How to get our emotional health together. You know who and what is not supposed to be a part of your life. You, you know it. You know what is not supposed to be there. And as, and, and as well as our mental health, take some time, take a breath. And it is, there is nothing wrong with going to get counseling, to go in to get help. If I were a diabetic or if I had a physical malady that was going on with me, surely I would go to a medical doctor to get myself taken care of. Same thing for mental health. See someone who can help you. There's no harm in that. The harm is staying the same. Hello, just saying. So on this Christmas Eve, I wanted to leave you with these thoughts of encouragement. Stay encouraged. Be around people who are positive. Don't don't be around people who are going to make you their garbage can. Be around people who are going to make you their flower pot, who are going to water you and give you sunshine. So again, my name is Chelsea Cookie Payne, founder of Pain and Glory Incorporated. You can find us on www. Painandglory.com. You can follow us on social media, which is at Pain and Glory. That's P-A-Y-N-E and Glory.com. As well as please find that find us on uh, YouTube. Go to our YouTube channel where you'll find this and other periscopes. You'll find other things that we have posted on there. We just celebrated our 10 year. You're welcome. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary. You'll see snippets of that. You'll see other things that we have broadcast in the past. So go on to YouTube and find our, our YouTube page. That's Pain and Glory. And I just, again, want to encourage you. Let's spend some, spend some time with you. It's great to spend time with family over Christmas time and New Year's. And it's great to do all that. But take a minute. Take a minute and spend some time with you. Here's to your health. God bless and Merry Christmas.